Hello, my name is Vince Farrell and I'm a Senior Applications Engineer here at Hawkridge Systems. In this video I want to show you two different workflows for taking a master model and converting it into individual parts. I'll be covering insert part and save bodies. I'm working on a jack-o'-lantern toy for my kids that I'm going to 3D print. Everything was done in one part which is a common practice and much easier than trying to design each half separately. But now I need to split it up for manufacturing. First, I'm going to use the split command to separate the part into a top and a bottom half. You could also use mold tools if your parting line isn't simple. I'll use the top plane as the cutting tool and select the top piece as a body to keep. Looking at the solid bodies folder, there are a few more after the split. I'll rename this one top half to help me remember which is which. The first technique I'll talk about is using insert part. To do this, I'm going to start a new part and call it top half dash IP. Now I can go to insert part and look for the part I want to bring in. Since the original is still open, it shows up in this list, but I can browse for any part. I can select which configuration to bring in and what to transfer over. Note that at a minimum, you need to bring over the solid or surface bodies. There's a checkbox to break the link to the original part. If you turn that on, it grays out the transfer selections and brings in everything. There will also be no link if the original is updated, more on this later. I want the new part to keep the same visual properties, so I'll turn that on. Finally, there's a box to locate the part using move copy, but I'm just going to hit the green check to put it at the origin. The new part has one feature in it, which shows an external reference to the original and the range of what I brought over. If I broke the link, we would see all of the original features in a folder. Using this method, all of the bodies are here. I'm going to select all the ones I don't want, right click and select delete keep bodies. Now I'm left with only the top half of the pumpkin. Let's switch back to the original part and use the other technique, save bodies. Again, I'll right click on the solid bodies folder and then select the command save bodies. Here, I can select just the top half and it will create a new part. This is another reason to rename the body before you do this since the new file will take on its name. In the new part, I see a save bodies feature, again that shows an external reference. Going back to the parent part, in the tree there's also a save bodies feature. Note that there's nothing to show this part has been inserted into another part using the previous method but you can look at the SOLIDWORKS file utilities where used function to chase it down. I've decided to add a third eye to make this thing more freaky. I have a sketch so I'll create an extruded cut on the front surface of the pumpkin. The new feature is created below the save bodies feature in the tree. Now let's take a look at the other parts. For the inserted part, the feature is there because this part is linked to the original, so all changes will propagate to it. This is known as a pull type of part. However, the part that was created using save bodies doesn't show the new feature. Hmm. Going back to the original part, anything added after the save bodies feature is not included in the new part. The save bodies part is a push type of part. Everything before the feature is pushed to the new part. If I reorder the cut before the save bodies command, it's now in the corresponding part. Hopefully this video showed you the differences between these two techniques so that you can decide which works best for your designs. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to the Hawkridge Systems YouTube channel for more videos like this, and thanks for watching.